Welcome back everyone, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Spring Framework. Now Spring Framework is one of the best framework available for Java. Now why do we need it? Now think about this, when you are working on Java technology, maybe a software development or a web development or maybe the enterprise development. Now depending upon what you are working on, we have a module available in Spring. Example, let's say one of the common issues which we face is dependencies, right? So one object needs some other object. So Spring says, hey, you don't have to worry about that. I will give you feature of IOC. Again, what is that? What is dependency injection? What is IOC? We'll talk about that in the video, but it provides IOC and dependency injection. What if you want to work on web framework? In the moment you say web, oh, there's one thing very famous there, which is MVC and Spring has a module for it, which is Spring MVC. What if you want to connect with database? We have a separate module for that. So in this course, we are going to focus on the first part, which is Spring Dependency Injection. We'll be having a separate course on MVC and then the rest part. But here we are focusing only on Spring Dependency Injection, or you can say Spring Framework with Core, right? There's one important thing you have to understand, which is Maven. Because when you build Spring projects, uh, you will be using Maven as a build tool. So, so first we will be learning about Dependency Injection, uh, then we'll go for Maven and then we'll implement Spring IOC and then we will implement Spring Dependency Injection. So I hope you will enjoy the course. So hit that like button and do subscribe because we'll be uploading a lot of programming videos on this channel. In this video, we'll talk about Dependency Injection. Now, if you are working on a project, let's say if you are working on some advanced project, of course, you will be using some design patterns. And one of the design patterns which we come across is dependency injection. Doesn't matter which language we use, maybe Java, C Sharp, PHP, we have this concept there. But why is it so important? So in fact, we have these questions, right? What is dependency injection and why everyone want to use it? In fact, if you talk to some expert in industry, people who are working from a long time, they use this concept by default, you know, for them, it's like a normal thing. But for new developers, it's a new thing, right? For them, you need to understand how, what is dependency injection and why to use it. Now, how to use it, that will say in the practical, but then how to you why to use it? That's the question. Now think about this. Now when you say dependency, in, in software program, in software, what we do is we build code, right? We build objects. If you are working with object oriented programming, so we build objects, right? And those objects are dependent some on some other objects. Uh, so we, we create this object graph, right? So one object is depend upon some other object and that object depends on some other object. Uh, to, to give an example in real life, let's say if you want to buy a laptop, or if you want to build a laptop, let's say you are a laptop manufacturer. Now, in this case, in laptop, you have certain certain parts, right? We have a RAM, you have a hard drive, you have a screen. And of course, what makes a good laptop is good parts, right? Uh, example, if you buy a laptop from any company, the same company, they have a low range laptop and a high range laptop. What changes is the type of hard drive we use, the type of RAM we use. So of course, all these components are not built by the same company. So let's say if you buy an Apple machine, of course, Apple will not be building all the stuff by themselves. They will be buying it from some other companies. Uh, maybe the screen of MacBook is from Samsung. Maybe the hard drive is from Hitachi. Maybe the RAM is from SanDisk. So all these different company, they, they help. Uh, they help one company to build a project or uh, build a machine. Now the same way, if you want to build a project and if you want to, let's say if you have an object and that object is dependent on some other object, in this case, you will not be building all this stuff by yourself. Of course, you will be having classes for that, right? So in Java, what we do is we first create class and then we create object. Now to get an example, let's say we have a class here, which is class, let's say laptop. And inside class laptop, we need a object of hard drive. We need object of RAM. Now, how will you do it? Of course, you will be saying new, right? And when you say hard drive, of course, you need a concrete class, right? And that, let's say we have Hitachi hard drive. Now, let's say if you build a MacBook with Hitachi hard drive, what if in future you want to change it? Because we want to achieve this concept of loose coupling, right? I am sure you know about this concept of uh, tight coupling and loose coupling. That's what we have learned in software engineering. When you say loose coupling, it means one object is not totally dependent on another object. It may get replaced. Example, if you have Hitachi hard drive, in future you might want to use Samsung hard drive. It should, it should be possible, right? 
And that's why we, we use this concept of abstraction. What we do is we say, okay, uh, for each class, let's say Hitachi hard drive, let's create an abstract class or an interface called as hard drive. So when you instantiate it, it will be something like hard drive uh, ABC or hard drive OBJ equal to new Hitachi hard drive so that in future you can change it from Hitachi hard drive to Samsung hard drive. It should be that easy. But there's a question here. We are hard coding it, right? We are saying, hey, we, I'm, I'm going for a new Hitachi hard drive. And that's a bad thing because the moment you say hard coding, the moment you say new, you are going for tight coupling. That's, that's what we don't want. So we want someone else to give me those dependency. Oh, that's an important term here. So the laptop object is dependent on the hard drive object. That's a dependency. So we want to inject the hard drive object inside this, inside this laptop class. And the way you can do that is by using some service, which will be an uh, external service. They will inject the dependency. Okay, how it is possible? So we have this concept of dependency injection containers. Now they are responsible to create an object for you. Of course, the object has to be created. Uh, so they are responsible to create the object for you and then they will be injecting in your class. Okay, but where to mention that I want to inject and how will we create the object? And that's where we have to do configuration. Now, there are different ways of configuration, uh, configuring it. Example, if you are using Java, in Java we have Spring Framework and in Spring Framework, we need to do a lot of configuration. Earlier days, we used to work with Spring Framework, we used to configure everything using XML. Okay, so that's, that's, that's how you can configure. So you create an XML file, and in that XML file, you can mention, hey, if someone is asking for hard drive, give this object. Okay, now when you say XML, it means you can edit XML in future, right? So that is not a tight coupled. Okay, but still, as a Java programmer, you don't want to focus more on XML. And that's where in we have Spring Boot in Java, using which what you can do is just, we will be having some class as Hitachi hard drive, right? Or Samsung hard drive. So on top of these classes, you will simply write add component. That's it, okay? So you simply write add component, which makes them dependent, which makes them uh, a component of a Spring Framework, which will be generated as per requirement, okay? So those, those objects are ready with Spring Framework. But what about this class? How will this mention that you want this object? Uh, so on top of your hard drive, what you can say is you can say auto-wired. Okay, that's it. Your Spring Framework says, or your Spring Boot, with the help of Spring Framework says, okay, uh, here, someone is asking for hard drive. Okay, so this class needs a hard drive. And I do have a component there, so I can connect them. Right? That's a, that's a auto-wired. And just imagine it's so beautiful. They are getting connected. Again, the implementation you will see later. But this is, this is the main idea behind dependency injection, right? But why we need this? Is it only because of tight coupling? Uh, the answer is yes, we don't want to achieve tight coupling, we want loose coupling. Plus, there's one more important factor, which is testing. You need to test your software, right? Now, we always test our software as a whole, but sometimes we need to, not sometime, always we should, al we should also be testing your each component, each unit. Now, the thing is, let's say if you want to test a laptop, and lap when you say when you test a laptop, you should also test the hard drive. But don't you think when you buy a hard drive, like when Apple bought hard drive from Samsung, they must have tested that hard drive, right? Why you need to test the hard drive again and again? So what you want is when you're testing a laptop, you want to separate the hard drive, right? So in, in fact, in Java world, what you can think is you have a class and that class is working with a database object. Now you are testing this class, right? You don't want to test the database object. So you can create a mock object of this, of this class only if they are loosely coupled. So if you have a mock object, you can easily test this class without affecting your database. Okay. And to achieve that feature, you have to make sure that your software is loosely coupled. And that's why we have so many words, right? We have loosely coupled, we have dependency injection. So, so that's, that's so amazing about dependency injection. You just need to implement it so that you can test it better. You can maintain it better and how it exactly works that we'll see in the practical video. Today we are going to talk about Maven. Hold on, we have already heard about that in one of the video, right? So if you, if you have seen my last video, I've talked about Maven. 
But then after that, I have talked about different technologies like Hibernate, uh, Spring, and then we are going to start with REST now. So I want to make sure that you know this topic thoroughly. So let's start with it. So Maven is basically a build tool and it is under a license of Apache. And if you go to Maven repository, there are lots of libraries available. But hold on, why do we even need a, 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 Maven, a Maven thing? So basically what happens, you know, when you, walk, when you want to work with a new project, I mean, when you want to create a project, of course you need some third party libraries, right? Example, let's say if you want to create a project where you want to work with MySQL. So if you get a Java application, if you want to connect with MySQL, what you need is MySQL connector. So that's one of the dependencies you need. So you need a MySQL connector. The second thing is, let's say if you're also working with Spring. So when you work with Spring MVC, you need lots of dependencies, right? In fact, when you talk about Spring MVC, uh, we, need, uh, minim, minim, uh, we need minimum at least um, uh, 10 or 12 uh, depend, uh, libraries, what you say, or Java files. Uh, for Hibernate, we, requ we require 10 or li 11 libraries. Just imagine if you are working with all these frameworks, you have to download all this dependency by yourself. And that's a difficult thing, right? So if you want to download everything by yourself, that's not a good thing. Okay, even if you do that, you will say, okay, I'm a programmer, I will download everything from the internet. That's fine. The thing is, when you do it by yourself, when you download all the videos by yourself, the problem is, or not videos, the, the dependency by yourself, the problem is, uh, in future, if you want to update it, so let's say from Spring 4, now you have to go for Spring 5. What you have to do is you have to again go to, you have to, again go to spring, uh, spring Repository and you have to download those dependencies. And trust me, it's a pain because first, first of all, you have to download, download, the, uh, download the dependency. Second, uh, you have to make sure that you, the dependency which you have downloaded for Spring is matching with the Hibernate dependency. Right? And to solve this problem, we have a Maven repository. So Maven says, hey people, don't worry. Again, Maven has lots of advantages, like we, we have different goals to achieve, we can compile it, we can deploy using Maven. But here the important point for me is getting those JAR files, right? Because when you work on a project, those JAR files are very, very important to work with. Now question arises, how do you get those JAR files? It's very easy actually. You have to go to Maven repository and say, hey Maven repository, I want Spring dependencies. Hey Maven repository, I want Hibernate dependencies. And Maven will say, okay, so these are your Spring dependencies, these are your, Maven, uh, these are your Hibernate dependencies, and you got it. Okay, if you're, if, you're, if you're thinking about what is dependency, the Java files, right? So if you need certain Java files to work with some technologies, you need, the, you, those are called the dependencies. So Maven will give you those JAR or library dependency to you. But hold on, uh, is Maven a superman to do all those things, or superwoman to do all those things? Not exactly. Uh, so in Maven, you have to specify. So whenever you create a project, basically we have to remember some terms here. Now to understand Maven, you have to remember this term. So first, of, first, of, first of all, the project. So what is project? Basically everything, whatever you create in, is in Maven is basically a project. Now in that project, the most important file is this file, which is pom.xml. Now this is the file where you, where you will mention everything. So if you need Hibernate, just mention that, hey, I want Hibernate. And not in this way, but we have a different syntax, okay? So uh, we have to mention, hey, I need, uh, I need Spring. Again, not in this way, we have a different way of doing that. But this is the file where you have to mention to Hibernate, hey, I want, or to Maven, hey, I want these dependencies. The second, uh, the, the second thing we have to remember is something called as artifact ID, or let's, let's go for group ID first. So this next thing we need is group ID. Now what is group ID? See, there are different type of projects which build by different people, right, or different companies. So if I'm building five projects, I want to make sure that each of my project is unique throughout the world. Okay, now how do we make sure that you, you're having a project which is unique throughout the world? So you have to make sure that the artifact ID which you are using is unique. Let's say if I, if I give an artifact ID as demo, is it unique throughout the world? Not exactly, right? Anyone can create a project with demo name. How about if I create a project name as ABC, I mean ABC1234, ABC1234, the big name. There's a chance that it may, that the name might repeat, right? And that's why what we do is, we combine the group ID and the artifact ID. So artifact ID will represent your project name and group ID will define your package. Example, uh, let's say if, if I'm, I'm making a project and I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm working for Telisco, so it would be te com.telisco, that's my group ID. So all the project which we build will be a part of com.telisco and the project is, let's say, demo. So now we have com.telisco.demo. And of course, we have to make sure that we are not creating demo project once again, right? So that's your artifact ID, which is your demo, and your group ID is that com.telisco. Again, you can use the same thing as your package name. You can say com.telisco.demo.web. That's your package name. 
right? So you have to remember these terms and your, your Maven will become very easy to you. So, okay, so now how do you mention in Maven that we want dependencies? So it, you can see it's a very simple form file where you have dependency tab, dependencies tab. Now, if you want a, a Spring Java file, it's very easy. Just go to the official website of Spring or, okay, so we can go to official website of Spring. You can, you can copy that code. But then instead of going to individual website, like go to Spring website, go to uh, Hibernate website, what you can also do is you can just go to an MVN repository, which is a central repository for all the Java files. Just go there and search for Spring. It will give you a code. Just go to your form file and paste and you will get your project back. I mean, you will get all your dependencies. That's awesome, right? And trust me, it, it works like a magic. Uh, now question arise. If you don't have that jar file in your machine, that means it is coming from the internet, right? So whenever you work with Maven, you have to make sure that you are connected with, connected with the internet and that's where the problem starts. Every time you create a project, you have to make sure that you're connected with the internet. Uh, okay, that's not the case. What happens is when you are using Spring dependency for the first time, let's say if you're using Spring 4.3.8 for the first time, it will get downloaded from the remote repository. So Maven has a remote repository from where you get all the jar files. But it also has a local repository. So in your machine, you'll be having a local repository. So every time you ask for a dependency now, it will first search for local repository. If it is not there, it will go to remote repository. Now, next time when you search for it, you already have that in local repository, right? So it will it will incre increase your performance, or you can say it will, it, will, it will reduce the time it takes to download those dependencies. So that's an awesome thing, right? So we can use Maven to build our project and we can get all the Java files. Again, we have not talked about everything in Maven. It's a very big topic. It's, it, this video is important for you because if, if, if you want to learn about Spring, of course, all the projects which you will build in Spring maybe will be based on Maven. Okay, now Maven is not the only way to do that. We also have a way which, which is called as Gradle. Now, if you have ever worked on Android, we use Gradle there. But then uh, for web projects, for Java projects, most of us, we use Maven. But okay, we can also use Gradle in Java as well, okay? So yeah, that's it. That's In this video, we'll talk about the practical implementation of Maven. So in the last video, we have talked about the theory of Maven. So just to give a quick recap, what is Maven? So Maven is a build tool. So let's say you want to create a new project in which you want a project structure. You want something that will compile your files. You want something which will test your application. And you want something which will give you all the required libraries. So the main problem arises when you have when you want to create an application using Spring. So let's say you want to build an application in which you have to use Spring. Maybe you have to use Hibernate. For those Spring and Hibernate, we have we require some dependencies, which is libraries. So if you want to work with Hibernate, you require libraries. To work with Spring or Sturts, you require libraries. Now to 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 get all these libraries, you have to go to a website which is let's say Spring.io and you can download your libraries here. Now, that's very easy, right? But the problem is, so when you go to go to the Spring, so where you will get all the jar files required. So if you click on this project, uh, you can see Spring provides lots of uh, frameworks. So we'll select Spring Framework here. And if I go to Spring Framework, I have option of download the jar files and we have download link. No, we don't have any download link. So you can see we cannot download the libraries from here. The problem is even if you can download, you know, if Spring provides you the feature uh, to download these libraries, if you don't know about Spring, it's okay. We are just using Spring in our application because I'm making this video so that I can work on Spring in future on this uh, in this series of tutorial. But people who are not concerned about Spring, they are only, they are only watching this video just to learn Maven. So it's okay. Uh, you might be implementing Spring using Maven. You might be implementing Hibernate using Maven. So everything is almost same. You just have to deal with this part. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you're working on Spring or not. So uh, come back to the Spring part. So when, uh, when you talk about uh, this download file, so even if you can download this Spring libraries, maybe in future you're, you're downloading the current version, which is four. Maybe in future you have five. So again, you have to download those libraries by yourself, right? So as a developer, you have to download all the libraries. What if you can just mention somewhere in an application that I want Spring libraries and someone else, you know, not you, maybe someone else 
a software in your system which will download all the required libraries and that someone is Maven. What you have to do is you just have to use this type of text in your application automatically to download all the required jar, jar files for Spring. Not one, all. And that's the advantage. So how to use this part in your application? So we don't have to create a normal web normal core Java application. We have to create a Maven application. So for that, we have to click on new. We'll, we'll click on other. Uh, by default, whenever you create an application, you always choose Java project. But this time, we'll choose Maven project because we want to create a Maven project. We'll click on next. Uh, it is asking for the default work location. And uh, I will keep it as default, which is checked. Uh, if you click on next, uh, there are lots of options. So you can see a term here which is archetype. So as we have discussed in the last video, uh, so archetype is just a template of your project. So let, let's say you want to build a core Java application. So you have to choose archetype. Uh, you have to create a web application. So you have to choose a different archetype. So you can see if you want to create a web application, you have to choose this archetype which is maven hyphen archetype hyphen web app. Uh, in this, I'll be using a code of application. So I'll be, I'll be choosing this one, which is Maven Archetype Quick Start. So Quick Start will give you the code of application. Uh, so if you think on, we don't, we have only this number of options, uh, and the answer is no. So you can also click on all catalog. So as soon as I click on all catalog, you can see something is happening here, which is try, trying to download all the archetypes available in the remote server. Okay, so Maven is a network ready network ready framework. So when you want to work with Maven, you have to make sure you have a proper internet connection enabled. So I will not, yeah, so you can see uh, uh, we have lots of archetypes available. So if you want to work with App Engine, if you want to work with AWS, for everything we have a different archetype available. So you can see this is App Engine. Uh, yeah, we have lots of uh, archetypes here. You will add on all these archetypes. Doesn't matter. So we have to choose the next one, which is internal. Uh, so this is internal archetypes, which will choose Maven archetype quick start. And then we'll click on next. So you can see we have a group ID. So basically group ID is your package name. Uh, so we'll, we'll say group ID is just a com dot Navin and we'll make this application name as uh, telescope. Okay, that's my application name. So group ID is your package name and then this artifact ID is your project name. So it, uh, it pack, the package name combines the group ID, it's a combination of group ID and artifact ID, which is com.navin.telescope. And then yeah, that's it. So we'll click on finish. So as soon as you click on finish, it will create a project. Okay. And then you can see if you expand this uh, Maven dependencies, you already have a jar file here. Okay. Now from where you're getting this jar file? So this jar file is coming from the remote server. But hold on, every time you create a new application, the jar files will be coming from remote, remote application. Since already I have created a project in which I have JUnit. So what your Maven will do is, it will create two repositories. One will be the remote repository, second will be the local repository. The remote repository will be on remote server and the local repository will be on your machine. Now, how to check where is the remote repository? So it's, it is giving the path. So it is users, uh, Navin, Navin, it's my user account name. And then the folder name is .m2, which is by default hidden folder. In m2 folder, we have repository. And in repository, we have the type of uh, library, which is, uh, where is the pop-up? It is JUnit, and then JUnit, and the version is 3.8.1. Okay, so just to confirm, let's see where, it is, where the file is. So I will open my terminal. So if you are using Mac or uh, Unix, so you can just open your terminal and type ls. And you can see we don't have any folder called as dot, uh, what do you say, uh, dot m2. So what we can do is we'll say clear and we'll say ls hyphen a. So as soon as you say ls hyphen a, you can say, you can see there is a folder called as dot m2. So again, let's say clear, we'll say ls, not ls, we'll say cd dot m2 so yeah so currently i'm into m2 folder and we'll say ls just to list the folders i have a repository folder uh, let me go to repository ls i have all these folders here uh, so you can see there's a junit folder so we'll say cd junit ls again a junit folder so we'll say junit ls 
and then we can you can see we have two jar files one is 3.8.1 and then we have 3.8.2 so maybe some you know maybe last time i have created a project using the latest uh, jar file which is 3.8.2 but hold on where I have mentioned uh, which version I'm i want to use and which jar files i need so uh, in this project structure you can see there's something called as uh, pom.xml so the main part of maven is this file which is pom.xml so you can see all your configuration in this file which is pom.xml now also called as pom.xml now in this you have to mention something you have to mention the group id again you don't have to write all this thing when you create a project you will get everything so you will get a group id you will get the artifact id and the packaging type. So if you are creating a Koja application, it will be a jar file. If you are creating a web application, it will be a WAR file. Uh, next, uh, this then this is very important for you. This is called a dependencies. Now, whenever you create an application, in that application, if you want to use any third party API, so you have to mention that dependency here. So if you want to use a J unit in your project, so you have to mention this dependency. Since you are mentioning uh, group ID as J unit, artifact ID as J unit, and then version is 3.8.1, that's why you are getting this one. How about let me do some experiment? Let me write 3.8.2. So you can see it says building a workspace, and then it is it has changed 3.8.2 because it was already there in my local 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 repository. Uh, let me do some experiment. I don't know even that that exists. 3.8.0 so if i say you can say it, it takes some time to build an error so if we don't have anything called as 3.8.1 or 8.0 maybe just a wild try i've not done this experiment before so i might get an error yeah, so i'm getting these errors so we don't have uh, current available 3.7.1 we have 3.8.1 and 3.8.2 okay so that's how we have to create this uh three point this, this genuity here now the next part is you have to when you expand this folder src so you can see not this src let's expand this src so in src we have two folders one is main and test so if you expand main you have java so if, i hope you remember the package name which is com dot navin dot telesco if i expand telesco i have a file which is app dot java and by default you can see we have something called as hello world awesome right so you have to write it write this code at least you will be getting the basic code by by itself and then this is a project structure so the advantage of using maven here is you get a project structure you also get all the de de required dependencies but hold on i want spring libraries now how to get those libraries now it's damn easy just open your pom file so you can see we have a dependencies tag here and that in that dependencies we have a dependency which is JUnit. how about if i add one more dependency now how to do that just go to Spring website and just copy this dependency as we have done. We have done, we have navigated this part uh, in the sort of sort of tutorial. So just copy this dependency, go to Eclipse and paste, and see the beauty of Maven now. So you get all the required jar files, right? And it is everything is coming from the remote server. Again, since I have done this application before. I'm getting all this from the local repository. So if you are doing it for the first time, it will download everything from the remote repository and it will take some it may take some time from 20 seconds to one minute, depending upon your internet speed, or maybe 10 seconds if you are using a high speed internet. Uh, since I, I, I already have this into my local repository, it, it doesn't take much time. Simple, so this is how you have to create a simple Maven application. So the next part we'll be talking about how to implement Spring and how to achieve dependency injection. So in the last video we have talked about Maven. So we have created a project or a project structure using Maven in which I have mentioned a POM file in which we are mentioning the dependency for Spring and then we, are, we have we've got this app file. Now what we'll be doing is we'll be not using this uh, app dot Java. So I hope you have seen my the theory. Uh, you have seen my video, which is Spring Theory, which is the first video of this playlist. In that we have talked about why we require Spring. So just to give a quick recap, why we require Spring framework. So Spring provides multiple features. So Spring we can use Spring with web. We can use use Spring for 
a dependency injection. So what is basically dependency injection is, so let's say you want to create a car, in that car you have lots of parts, you have tire, you have engine, so instead of creating, so, so instead, of, instead of creating everything by yourself at runtime, what you can do is, whatever dependency you need, you can ask someone else to give you those dependencies. So that in future, if you exp if you change your dependencies, you don't have to change your code. Now, what 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 I mean by all this thing, you will understand when I start with the code. So initially, it will you will find it very difficult or maybe confusing. Uh, maybe I am not maybe I uh, I was not able to explain it clearly for clearly clearly to you how what is what, what exactly Spring is. But I'm sure if you uh, if you see some of the videos in you know in the further tutorials. Uh, it, you will get some idea about it, start creating applications, start working on it and you will get the clear idea. I will also suggest you to read a book of Spring with this tutorial so that this tutorial will give you the basic idea of Spring, not the detail or what you say, in detail description. So I'm just teaching you Spring just to make sure that you will, you can build an application. But to understand this concept, you know, purely, you have to read some book. I will suggest there is a book from Rod Johnson, a soft copy of this, but you can find it on Spring.io, which is the official website of Spring, which is amazing book. No need to you no need to buy any uh, hard copy book from maybe online stores. You can just uh, use that reference. Uh, so let me let let's start let me start with the actual work. Okay, just be with me. You will get the idea why why we have to use Spring. Uh, so let, let's start with building a car. So what I will do is in my telescope package, let me create a new class. Okay, and where's the new class? Uh, not letting, yeah, okay, so file and hold on, I'm not getting class here. Right package. Okay, new, other, and I need a class. Okay, and package will be com dot navin dot telesco, and the class name will be let's say I want to build a car. Okay, and finish. Now just to build this car, what we need is this car will have some features. Let's say we'll say this this car we can drive this car. Okay, and this will say. Okay, I might use some Hindi words here because I love this language Hindi. So what I will do is uh, in this drive I will say "chal rahi hai," which simply means it's dry, it's, you know, it's working. So uh, or "chal raha hai," has to be sound cheesy. So now let's open my app. Can you see this card somewhere? I don't know what's wrong with my package? I can't see card here. I can see you. Oh, no issue. Don't jump. It's okay. Ignore that part. Okay, so in that app, what we can do is we, we have we need to create object of that car. So we'll say car, car equal to new car. So this car is the class name, and this car here, this is the what do you say, a reference. And we can simply say car dot drive. Simple. And let me just run this. So if I run this app. So you can see it will show me the output as chal rahe. That means it, it's working, right? So you can see uh, it says drive and it says chal rahe. Now let me do some modification. Uh, the problem here is when I, when I talk about car, let's say in future I don't want to use a car. I want to use maybe bike or maybe I want to use, uh, I don't know what, maybe some other, other, other vehicle. So the problem is if I change, uh, if I make a different uh, class here, let me let me create one more class, and we'll name this class as bike. Okay. The problem is in this bike also we'll be having a method called as public void. We don't drive, we ride bike, right? So let me use right. And let me print. So it, I will print here uh, again. Bhagra is like running. So in that in in the car class I have chal raha hai and in bike we have bhag raha hai so I just want to uh, yeah it doesn't matter and then just to make it uh, similar we'll drive a bike this time you know I know it's it we should drive it but 
you know, just to just for, just for the sake of, sake, of, sake of example, we'll, we'll make it drive. Uh, maybe the bike lover will hate me after this video, but it's okay. Uh, yeah, so what I want, so in future you find to change. So I have to change both. I have to change this also. I have to say this is bike. And I have to change this to bike. And then we can say, we'll not say this is car. We'll say this is, just to make it simple, I will say this is OBJ. Okay. And, okay, so we can say OBJ to drive. And if, now if I run this, I will get Bhagrai, which is bike class, right? But the problem is, if I update my classes, I have to change the source code. Why I need to change the source code? I want to make it, I want to make it in, I want to run it such a way that it will not depend upon the class uh, car or class bike. So this main function here or this object should be independent of this, of this classes here. Now how to remove this dependencies? So we have to use a concept of dependency injection. So before implementing dep dependency injection, let me remove this bike here. So we have two dependencies. We have uh, dependency on right side and we have dependency on left side. What I'm saying, yeah, left, right, yeah. So we have um, dependency on left and right. So what we can do is, I don't know, maybe let, let's create an interface. So if I create an interface, the advantage will be both bike and car, they are vehicle, right? So the advantage will be in this vehicle, I will say public void drive, which is just declared. And since we are defining an interface, we don't have to use public because by default, all the methods in interface are public, right? And then will this will say this car implements, this car implements vehicle. And even this bike implements, oh, hold on, implements vehicle. And that's why it is drive, okay? Just just to make sure we, we drive a vehicle. And then instead of bike, what what if if I keep it as vehicle? Now the advantage is even if I want to change from bike to car, I have to change only the right part, which is from car, from bike to car, or from car to bike. So we have to change only one thing. But why to change that one thing also? We want to make it in a such a way that we don't have to change that side part. And just to do that, what we need is we have to use, we need to use Spring Framework. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll ask, we'll say, I don't want to say new car. I want to say, uh, get me a bean, okay, simple, get me a bean. And that bean should be a vehicle. Doesn't matter which vehicle is available. I want a vehicle. So let's say I want to go to a college or I want to go to office. I will say, give me a vehicle. That's it. So if I have a car available, I will get a car. If I have a bike available, I will get a bike. So I will say get bean vehicle. But hold on, what is get bean? Now get bean is a method which belongs to, we can, we can, you can use bed, uh, get bean from two interfaces. The first interface you can use is bin factory. And the second interface you can use is application context. So either you can use bin factory or you can use application context. Both this belongs to Spring Framework. So if you want to use bin factory, you have to import a package and you can see the package is com dot spring framework dot beans dot factory. If you want to work with application context, the package is there's the package. Oh, it's not working. It should be it should work. Acha because of the error, I guess. So this application context. So it also belongs to our uh, Spring Framework. Now, which is better? So if you are creating a small application, you can use Bin Factory. But if you are creating a enterprise level application or web application, you should always go for application context. So application context is a superset of Bin Factory. So whatever features provided by Bin Factory is also provided by application context. So why not application context? So in this application, we'll be using application context. And we'll name the object as context itself. We'll say next or uh, new. Uh, now the problem is application context is an interface. So to implement that, we have to use class uh, class path uh, class path XML application context. Okay. Now if your question is how will I remember all these classes? Uh, the problem is when, when I started learning Spring Framework, so even at that time I was not knowing how to, what are the class name or interface name is. Once you start making applications, you will get in the habit of remembering all these class names. 
Okay, so that's okay. You know, initially you have to use some book or refer some book, but after having hands-on experience, you can just you know just uh, type all these things. In this, uh, yeah, so that that's it. And then we have to say context dot get bean, and then it will give you vehicle. Uh, but there's a problem. This get bin will give you the object. So you can see we are getting an error. So it says cannot convert from object to vehicle. So get bin will give you object of object, right? So we have to typecast it to vehicle. So we have to say it will give you the object of vehicle. Okay, that's it. It's working. So I think everything is perfect. You are asking application context uh, to give you the get bin of vehicle. Uh, I think it should work. Let's try. As soon as we run this application, it says illegal state exception, bin factory not initialized or already called refresh. Uh, I don't know what's the error. The problem is, whenever you work with application context or whenever you work with class path application, XML application context, it says, okay, I will give you the object of vehicle. But tell me, what is this vehicle? This is not a class name. This is just a keyword, right? How would I know which class instance you want? Because vehicle itself is an interface. Because, and you can only create instance of a class, right? And that is your bike or car. So you have to define it somewhere. You have to mention whenever I ask for a vehicle, I need a car instance. So to do that, we have to create an XML file. Okay, in an XML file, you can mention uh, which object you need whenever you call a vehicle. Okay, now how to create an XML file? How to complete this whole application that will say in the next part of the video. So now let's see how to create an XML file where we from where we can just read the data what we want. So to create that file, just go to your package in your SRC and just say new and we need to create a XML file. So we'll say XML. And then we'll choose XML file, we'll say next. And then we'll name this, name this as spring.xml. We can give any name, doesn't matter. And then uh, we'll be using some tags here. So the main tag we have to use is beans tag. Okay. And everything will be in this beans tag. So beans tag will be the root tag of your XML. Now, since we need a bean, so you, you can see we are asking for a bean. Okay. So we need to define this bean here. So to define this bean is we have to say bean, we have to mention id equal to. Now that id should be the id I'm mentioning here. So if you are mentioning vehicle, so it should be vehicle here. So we have vehicle here. Okay. And then we have to also mention the class. So from which class you want to create that? So we have to create from com dot navin dot there is go. Yeah. And then we have to close the bean tag. And that's it. So once you do this, you will get uh, your uh, your bin file, or you will be, you will be getting your object of uh, vehicle. Hold well on, we have we have not mentioned the class name, so we'll mention the class name as car. Okay, that's your class. Now you have to mention that file somewhere, right? So in this application context, and just double quotes you have to mention it is Spring dot XML. So that whenever you call for, whenever you create object of this context, it will go to the spring.xml file just to load all the config configuration. So now you know whenever you call for a vehicle, you will get a car. Right. Amazing, right? And But there is one problem. Whenever you work with XML, XML always go for the user-defined tags, right? Or, pre or what do you say? Custom tags. And this custom tags needs a definition. Now you cannot write any tag and you, 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 you can just roam, out, roam with it. Whenever you use a tag, you have to make sure that tag has a definition. Now, from where you will get the definition? So, you, you can look for different projects or you can just go to Spring website for the definition. I have already have the definition with me and this is the definition I have. So, I'll just copy this definition and paste it here. So, you, will, you can get this from, uh, you can just Google it or you can just, you, you can go to the Spring website and you can download this definition. Okay, so this is the definition for the beans tag. Okay, this one. Since I'm working with the Spring 4.0 version, so I'm using 4.0. So if you're working with 3.0 libraries, you have to mention 3.0. 4, 4, 4, 4 is the latest uh, 
what do you say? Let's just watch the first spring here. And let's run this now. So if I run this and boom, so I'm getting Chaldraahe. And that's the magic, right? In this, I'm not mentioning anything. I'm, I'm not mentioning car. I'm not mentioning bike. It is totally independent. I'm injecting those objects from external location. So you can see if I if I change this to bike, okay, and if I run this, and then I'm getting Bhagrai, which is for bike, right? But you will say, what's the big deal? If I, if I, if I want bike or car, I have to change something, right? But hold on, in the earlier version, we were changing the source code of Java. So whenever you say change the source code for Java, you have to recompile your files. This time we are changing the XML file. We don't have to recompile, we just have to say save. And that's the advantage of using Spring Framework. Okay, so that's the basic idea of how to use Spring code, how to achieve dependency injection. In the further videos, we'll talk about uh, how to set different properties, how to use multiple objects and object inside an object. So how to do that, that will see in the further tutorials. In the last video, we have talked about how to create a Spring application in which you can inject an object from outside. And that is called a dependency injection, right? So we have uh, achieved that with the help of application context interface. And we have to mention a Spring.xml file in which you have to define uh, all the beans you require. You have to mention a bean ID and you have to mention a bike. Now the, for, for the further tutorials, we'll, you just have to update this XML. Uh, why we are doing this is because in this video, we'll talk about different type of configuration. See, when you talk about Spring application and when you talk about application context, so this is responsible, this object is responsible to give you those beans. But the problem is you have to configure it somewhere, right? So, so we want vehicle. So we have to we have to configure somewhere that whenever I ask for a vehicle, I have to provide a object of bike. Now this type of configuration is possible in two ways. In fact, in Spring we have three ways. The first way of configuration is using XML. So this is what this is how we do XML based configuration. The second way of doing this is using annotation based configuration. Uh, again, in this video we'll talk about annotation. And third way is we, we can use Java configuration. Now when we talk about Java configuration, we have it's a very new type of uh, configuration for Spring. Initially it was XML. Then in the some version we have introduced annotation, and in the latest version we have talked about we talked we talked about uh, uh, we have Java configuration. So in this video we'll see how to do annotation based configuration. And to use annotation based configuration, we have to introduce some lines here. So we have to introduce this two this three lines. So this one. And there's two lines. Again, you can get this from Google. So just go to Google and search for uh, how to do annotation configuration XML on Google. So you will get this this line there. Now, uh, or you can just copy. You can just uh, write this file. Now, what we'll do is uh, we'll try to configure this with the help of annotation. So some changes here. First, I will not say I want a vehicle. I will say I want a car. Okay, simple, I want a car. Now the next thing is, why I have to configure it here? I will just comment this part. Okay, let's see what happens if I comment. So if I run this, it says no such bin definition exception. Okay, so no bin named car. Okay, so it's, it's not able to find a bin. What we can do is, we can specify here itself. We can specify here itself in this car itself we can say at component now we can say this car is a component so whenever you want to achieve annotation based configuration just go to this car class and say add component now to use add component we have to say control space it will give yeah so it's a stereotype annotation and it is add component now whenever you use annotation based configuration we don't have to mention that inside a XML file. Simple. We can simply say the component. So this component is same like writing this line in XML. But hold on. Uh, in XML, we mention the vehicle name, right? So we have to mention an ID, which is vehicle. We are not mentioning anything here. So what will be the default name for this car? 
and yes the default name for this car will be will be car so that name will be non qualified and decapitalized which simply means we don't have to use a package name we can directly use a class name because in general the class name for this is com dot navin dot telesco dot car so we have to remove all those packages we just have to take a car so you can see we have we are getting a suggestion here so we have to just have to say car but it, it should be decapitalized so we don't have to use the first c as capital we have to make it small so the default name for this bean is this car c a r and now if you run this and boom we are again getting an error it says no bin named car it's because when you try to run this application every time it will go to this file and it says okay we, we are not getting any bin definition here but you will say we have here right in this car class we are defining component but the problem is you know that you have you have written component your spring framework doesn't know that you have written the component now to let your spring framework know that you are using uh, uh, the annotation based configuration we have to use a, a line here which says context is configured with annotation configuration and your okay not this one not this line sorry we have to use uh, context component scan and you have to mention the base package we have to mention com dot uh, is it Navin? No, it's, yeah, it's Navin. So com dot Navin dot telesco dot yeah, we have to just mention the package name. And now let's run this. So if you now if you run this, you're getting chal raha hai. Simple. Now what if I write bike and run? And of course for bike you'll be getting the error. It's because in the bike class we have not mentioned at component so we have to mention at component here simple and now if you run this it says bhagrai simple so this is how we have to we have to write annotation based configuration so in the further tutorials we'll be working on both so we'll be saying something with uh, xml based configuration then we'll see annotation based configuration but for the advanced tutorials we'll talk only about annotation based configuration because that is what highly used So in the last video we have talked about uh, this file so we have car.java and we have a car class we have app in which we will have a main function then we have bike and then we have vehicle interface uh, this is our configuration file and this is my pom.xml which is for maven now what we'll do is just to go beyond the exam just go ahead of this let's create a new file and then we'll name this class as tire in this tire what we'll be having is we have uh, so let's say we have private string and we'll name this variable as brand okay so let's say uh, if you talk about tires so tire will be of different brands or so maybe mrf c8 or all different uh, of this stone maybe so we have lots of companies who make uh, tires so for this brand we require a getter and setter so just take this getter and setter here and we'll say okay now we got getter setter for this brand now in this uh, let me print not here maybe okay so let's let's print a uh, data so let's uh, so if i try to print the object of tire i want to print this data so i will just use a two string method just to print the data of the tire and i will use this which will print the brand name now i want to create object of that tire in this class okay so let me just comment this vehicle for time in let me just use this comments let me create object of tire now how to get object of tire so we have to say tire then you have to say t equal to new tire right but again uh, whenever you use a new keyword it adds some dependencies so what we'll do is uh, we'll remove this dependency and we can simply say uh, i need a tire object so i will say context dot uh oh ignore the error okay so context dot get bean 
and then here we'll mention I want a tire. But hold on, we are not we have not mentioned this tire in our XML file. So if I go to XML file, you can see we don't have anything called as tire. So either we can use I can we can define this tire using annotation based configuration as we have done then in the last video, or we can do with the help of uh, XML based configuration. So just for the example, for this type of example, for the example what I have to explain, I will use XML for tire. So how to use XML, so we have to define a bean tag. In this ID we have to mention we are working with tire. And then we have to say class equal to. And then it is com.navin.telisco.tire. And again, I know I, we should not use a package name with capital letters, but uh, that's okay for the example. Okay, so now uh, I got an object here and yeah, we are ready to run this. So let's print, let's print T here. And now if I print T, so if I run this, you can see output is tire and brand is equal to null. Oh, why null? It's because in this tire, we are creating a variable called as brand. In case of car, in case of bike, we don't have any variables. What if you talk if you talk about tire, we have a, a string called as brand. Then we have one more dependency here. So brand becomes a dependency. That string variable be, uh, becomes a dependency for your tire class. Now how to add that dependent or how to solve that dependency? So we have to. So for this class, which is tire, this brand here is a property, right? So Spring allows you to set a property. So we have, we, have, we have a property name as brand and then we can specify a value. So we'll say the value is MRF. So it belong, it's, it's a MRF tire. And now if we run this, here we go. We are getting a brand as MRF, as simple as that. So we can simply specify the brand name or the property inside a bean tag. This is how we do it in XML format. Simple. So let's say in future, if I want to change from MRF to let's say C8. So let's say if I use C8 here, and now if I run this application, so if I run this, it will be brand C8. Simple. So that's how you add a property tag inside, uh, inside your bean. So in the last video we have seen, uh, we have created this class which is app and then tire and we are trying to create the instance of tire here. So for that what we are doing is we are saying tire t equal to then in using type casting. So we have to use context dot get bean, we have to mention tire. So if you mention this line here, you will get the instance of tire. From where you are getting the instance, so this, this file is helping you for the instance. And then we have used a property tag to assign the value for the tire. So if you can see in this tire, we have a variable called as brand. And then I'm assigning the value brand using uh, this property tag. Now, whenever you use this type of properties, so basically you are using a method which is setter. Oh, sorry, this one. So we are using this method which is set. Okay. So whenever you use a property tag inside your bean, you are actually using a setter here. But it's not compulsory that we can only assign the value using setter. We can also uh, we can assign a value using constructor. So whenever you use setter, it is called a setter injection. Whenever you use constructor, it will be called as constructor injection. Now, in order to use constructor injection, the first thing we need is we need a constructor here. So to assign a constructor, we'll use uh, we'll say source. Okay, give me a constructor with fields yes and then with brand so i got a constructor here and then when, once you got the constructor we cannot use property here so we'll comment this part okay now once you got the comment let's define a constructor so how to write a constructor so just say control space uh, you will get constructor arg as the suggestion use constructor arg and then you can mention a value so in this value we'll specify let's say again mrf okay and then this MRF will go to this tire parameter which is brand and it will assign the value here. Simple right and let's run this. 
So now if I run this, so you can see it is brand MRF. Simple. So that's how you, you, you can use a constructor injection. So let's continue from where we left in the last video. So we have created this class tire in which we have we are using a tire constructor for constructor constructor injection. Uh, what we'll do is we'll remove this constructor injection and we'll we'll go back to the property. In fact, uh, we can skip this property part also. We just we do not, we don't want to assign any value. We are just going for the object of tire. Let's run this just to verify the we are getting the output. So oh we got an error. It says constructor not found. Okay, so once we are making some changes, so we don't want constructor. Okay. So now it's printing brand as null. Okay, uh, when we get brand as null, it's because I'm printing this part. So I will just print tire, okay, that's it. I don't want to print the brand name, it's just tire. So now if I run, I'm getting a tire, that's it. Now what we'll do is, uh, every car needs a tire, right? So what we'll do is, here, let's create a object of tire. Now to create a reference of tire, so we'll say, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so it is private, uh, we'll say tire, tire. And for this reference, we require a getter and setter. So we'll say right click, uh, source, and where's my getter setter? So it's here. So let's select a tire and click on OK. So you got a tire getter and setter. Now, once you got the getter and setter, uh, so let's verify. So for this tire, I have a component. So, so basically, we are using annotation based configuration here. But for tire, we are still going for, what do you say, uh, we have XML based configuration. So will it work? Mm, let's see. The thing is, when you, whenever you mix uh, annotation based configuration and XML based configuration, we can do that. It is called as mixed configuration. So we can use both at the same time. Okay, so in this example, we are using both. So let's try to run this. Uh, so we are using tire. Okay, let's, let's print. So in this trial, if I print drive, so let's not print car. Let's say uh, it's car plus, and let's also print the tire. Okay, let's print, uh, let's print tire. So whenever I try to print tire, it will call the two string method of this and will print uh, it's working okay and let's run this now so if I run this it says it's working because we are oh, we, we, we are so we are yet to change this so in app let's come back to let's create object of uh, car again so let's not make it vehicle let's make it car this is what we have done in the first video if you remember and let's make it car and we're asking for a car let's not use tire okay just say obj.drive simple now if you run this oh it says car and it prints null so somewhere we are not getting this object we are not getting this tire so it's because whenever you want to use this tire here so this for for this class car the tire here is a property right so we have to go here in XML file and then we have to define this again we have to define this card here and then we have to assign the property so we'll not do all those things we'll, we'll try to use annotations here so for this we have to use an annotation which is called as auto wired so whenever you use a wire, auto wired annotation and if you run this so you can see it says car it's working so what this auto wired annotation will do is it will check okay we need a car so if we need a tire, so it will go to the XML file and we'll say, okay, so if you need a tire, you will get instance of this tire. Simple. So that's how annotation, con annotation uh, work. But uh, can I, can I remove this? 
I don't want to use XML based configuration now. So will it work? Of course not because car is the component. So I'm not using XML based configuration. So that, that, let's come in this part just to show you. So I'm not using XML based configuration. I'm using annotation based configuration. And this tire is not a component. So we have to mention component here also. So we have to use add component. And now if I run this, you'll be getting the same output, which is car, it's working. So what are the changes we have made? So we have we have a class car in which I'm using auto wide annotation. And then we have a tire in, on which I'm using add component annotation. So you can see we are not using any XML configuration. Everything is annotation based configuration. So this is auto wire annotation. Uh, I'm also using component and then this is component annotation. In this video, we'll talk about Spring Framework. We'll also use Maven in this and we'll try to configure a Spring application with the help of annotations. So after, uh, after watching this video, you will understand what is Spring Framework, you'll understand uh, how to use Maven to create a Spring application and you can configure a Spring application with the help of annotations. Now, in fact, I have already created some videos for Spring Framework using XML configuration. So in this video, we'll talk about annotations, more, more focused on annotations, okay? So uh, we normally achieve uh, dependency, which is Spring, de uh, the dependency injection with the help of Spring Framework, right? So uh, what I will suggest is, if you want to know about the basic concept of Spring, uh, you, can, you can go to the playlist of Spring Framework, just uh, there are some uh, three to four videos, you'll understand what is Spring Framework, how to implement Spring Framework. This video is specifically for annotations. Okay, so you will find the link in the description area of the Spring Framework. Uh, okay, so let me create a new project. Uh, we'll be creating a Maven project because we want, we don't want to download all the required, required libraries, right? We can ask Maven to give you that for you. So we'll say uh, Maven project. Now, since we are going for a simple Spring application, we'll go for a quick start, which is a Maven archetype. Uh, you can go for Spring Web for web application. You can go for uh, quick start for Kojo application. I will name it com telescope and the artifact I will give is Spring annotation. So we'll say Spring Anno. Okay, that's the project name. So you can see we got our project where it is. It is here. And if I expand this, we have okay. So we have this POM file. Now since we want to work with Spring framework, we need to add those Spring dependencies here, right? So what we'll do is we'll for Spring dependencies just have to go to Google and search for maven repository because you will get all your libraries from here okay and here you can search for spring code that's what or we'll search, we search for spring context so we need to get this spring context here we can just take the latest version which is 4. Point, or we'll take 1.4.1.9 .1 it's always better to have a one lower version because it will be stable for sure let me copy this if i go back to the maven paste it here you can see it is downloading the jar files. If I go to Maven, we got all the required jar files. So uh, it will download everything from the uh, internet. If you have already done this earlier, so it will be having a local repository, which is .m2 folder in your documents. So you can just go to your home path, search for .m2 folder. You'll be having all these jar files there. Okay, that's the advantage of using Maven here. Okay, so once we got this, let's start with the actual work. So what we need here is we have a class and we'll, I will name this class as Samsung S7. So I want a oh, white, white dimension S7 will just will simply say Samsung. So we have a phone which is Samsung here. And in this Samsung class, we have a method. We'll name that method as public void uh, config. So that's the method name, which is config here. And uh, in this config, I will simply print what I will print Oh, this is Eclipse, so we have to say S out. And in this, we'll print the configuration of this phone. We can say this is octa core, uh, comma, this is 4 GB RAM. So I'm talking about uh, Samsung S7 to be specific. We have 12 megapixel camera. Okay, so that's camera. Right, so we have this uh, Samsung class here. And what I want to do now is I want to create this. I want to create this, uh, I want to call this config method. 
So in order to call this config method is uh, for that we require a main function, right? So we'll go for a main function here. Okay, so I have a, a, my main function inside this app. So app is a class. Inside this, I need to call that Samsung, right? So in order to call Samsung, we can simply say Samsung. Uh, we can say this is S7 equal to new Samsung S7, uh, sorry, Samsung. And at the end, we can say S7 dot config, right? And if you run, run this application, we'll be getting the output as uh, the the configuration right but the problem is we don't want to go go for this because this is not dependency injection right what we want to achieve so using spring you should be able to inject this object so in order to inject this object we can ask our factory which is application context to give you the object of samsung for that we need to create object of application context we can say this is factory equal to so in order to create object of application context we have to create we have to use a class which is Annotation config. Uh, in fact, if you remember in XML, we use uh, class path XML. And this we have to use annotation config application context in which you have to pass. Okay, for first we need the object of factory, and then uh, here we can specify factory dot get bean. You need to specify two things. The first thing uh, you need to specify the class name of which you want the object. We can say I want the object of Samsung dot class. Okay, and we need to also, yeah, that, that's done. So we need to specify that we want the object of Samsung dot class, right? And if you run this application now, so what we are doing, we're asking factory to give you the object. And if I run this code, okay, it's something is happening. We got, oh, we got an error here. It says illegal state exception is because, okay, we have not mentioned the configuration file here. So when you go for XML, you mention the XML name, right? Which is spring.xml in which you have to specify uh, something like this. You have to uh, specify that, or not this one, you have to specify instead of Snapdragon, you have to specify Samsung. And instead of CPU, we have to say we want a phone. So when you say we want a phone, you will get a Samsung, right? So this is what we do in, uh, when you work with XML type of configuration. Now we are not going for XML type of configuration. We are going for annotation based configuration. So in order to use annotation based configuration, what we need is we have to create a class who will who is responsible for this. So I will create a class who will provide me the configuration since we are working with annotation. So we'll create a class and we'll name this class as app config. Uh, we can give any, any name, doesn't matter. And since this class is a configuration class or this class is responsible for the configuration, we have to use an annotation which is at configuration so as soon as you specify add configuration now this file this class is responsible to create to give you those objects so in xml what we do we specify this stuff right so in uh, inside your xml or inside your annotation what we can do is uh, we can create a method and will this method will return you the object of samsung which is samsung and we'll name this as get phone so method name is get phone okay and uh, we can simply say return new samsung sounds good right so now as soon as you run this code now it will try to fetch the object from here let's try let's see what's happening oh we need to specify this stuff here also right we have to specify this is app config dot class so we need to specify uh, which con which configuration class you're working with so this factory need to know about the class you're working with. Okay, let's go back to the app config and everything seems good. And if I run this code, again, if I go here, we got another error now, which is no such bin definition found. So we got the class, so there's no error now of class, but it is not able to find the bin type of Samsung. The problem is inside your methods, you have to specify that this method is, is a bin it will it will return you a bin so that's the annotation we have to use in order to create uh, that dependency thing work and if i run this code now can you see that we got the output so you can see we are not using any xml file here everything is annotation based awesome right so this app config needs the object of or we, in this app config you have to specify at configuration which will specify that this is a configuration file and for every object, so let's say 
uh, in XML, we need one more object. So like, uh, let's say I want an object of mobile, uh, not a mobile. So every every phone is dependent upon the CPU, right? So let's say I have a bin here. ID will say this is CPU, and we have a class who creates this CPU. Let's say I'm, I'm talking about Snapdragon, right? So we can say this is Snapdragon. So we have a CPU of model Snapdragon. So now if I if I want the same thing, if you want to achieve the same thing here. We have to create another method. We'll say get CPU or get Snapdragon or anything. It will return you the object of Snapdragon and then you can, you can go on. So let's try to implement that. Let's see how to implement that stuff here. So what will what we we need here is uh, so you got the idea about uh, the uh, concept of dependency injection with the help of annotation, right? So what we'll do next is we'll try to create uh, another class, uh, not the class, but we will we want an interface here. So what I will do, I will create an interface. We'll say this is interface and this is mobile uh, processor. Okay, because every mobile every phone needs a processor, right? We'll click on finish. So what this phone processor or this mobile processor will have is it will have a method with name. We'll say this is method name is void process. That that's the stuff it will do. So we have a void process method. And to implement this void, uh, to implement this mobile processor, we have one more class, and we'll name that class as what? We'll name this class as we have a class which is so the first class is Snapdragon. Okay, and something more. So this Snapdragon will implement our interface which is with the name of mobile processor, right? So this is the interface, and when when you click on finish, you can see we got a method which is process. But by default it is empty, right? So what I will do, I will say sys out. I will say world best CPU, right? So we have a mobile processor which is Snapdragon, and inside your Samsung class, so every phone needs a processor, right? So in this, I will create the object of mobile processor. I will say mobile processor, and okay, mobile processor. I will say this is CPU. Right, and for this we require get and setter. So I will just right click here. I will say source get a setter because that's a variable, right? So we require get a setter for this. We click on OK, and let me remove this all extra tags which we don't require here. Okay, removed. Okay, so we got get CPU set CPU, and when I print the configuration, I also want to print the process. So I will say CPU dot process. Sounds good. <clears throat> so let me, let me repeat what we are doing here. When I run this application now, it will call the config method of Samsung, and this Samsung method or this uh, the config method will call the process method, which is a part of mobile processor. Now the question arises: If I run this, will it work? Uh, and the answer is no, of course, right? Because we have not created the object or object for CPU. It is just the de declaration, right? And we're trying to directly trying, trying to access the object. Of course, it will give you an error. So if I go to this. App and if I run this, so we are we were expecting the error right, which is null point exception. Then how to provide that object? How to provide this uh, object for mobile CPU? Again, I will not use uh, new object, new keyword there. So what I will do is uh, I will create the bean inside configuration for every object. We need to create a bean annotation that's compulsory, and we can specify a method name here. We can say this is public. It will return the object of mobile processor because that's what we want, and we'll name this. Uh, we can name it anything. We can say this is get. Uh, we can say this is get processor. Anyway, that name doesn't matter, and this will return. Now we need to provide the concrete implementation. So we can say this is Snapdragon. So specifically, we are saying it should return the object of Snapdragon. Okay. So now we have created that uh, mobile versus object also, right? But inside the Samsung, how will it, it will connect? Will it connect directly? Let's try. If I run this code, uh, we are still getting the error. It's because we are not able to connect it. So in order to connect these two two things in your Samsung class, we need to say this is at o, uh, at auto wired. So what it will do? It will search. I need the object of CPU. I will check in the app configuration. We already have a Method which returns mobile processor, so it will check the type of the return type. It will check the return type. So this auto wired inside the annotation part comes as 
by default is by type okay it will not check the name it will check the type and if I run this code or not this one if I run this app boom can you see that we got the output as world best CPU it's because you can see in Samsung we have still not created the object it is it is done automatically and that's the power of uh, this override annotation quite simple right so let me just repeat all this stuff here which we have done so we have created a class uh, with uh, yes yeah, so we have created a uh, we have created this app class in which you have a method which is uh, main in which you have application context object which is factory and using factory we are getting the object of Samsung which is get b in in bracket you can specify Samsung dot class and then we are saying s7 dot config right quite simple but the problem is uh, when you say get b in you have to provide those bin inside your app config so you have to specify this class here so this is your configuration class we can have another con configuration class also let's say you have one more configuration class as my app config so you can have two three four you can have multiple configuration files but when you work, whenever you're working with one configuration file you have to mention that file here inside your app configuration you are specifying two beans one is the get phone and the second one is get processor and then we have Samsung class we have mobile processor and then we have Snapdragon right uh, so it's, 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 it's that simple but what if I say you don't have to write these two things also that means if I delete this let, let me comment this part while you delete so if I comment this part it should it should still work and if I run this code, uh, it's not working. You can see we got the errors. Then question arises: How to achieve that? Uh, is it possible to comment those parts or, or not even writing those parts? Should it should work? Mm, we'll see that. So what we'll do is we'll see that stuff in the next video. How to do that? All those stuff. So now in this video, we'll talk. We'll see how to create beans with, without using this bean tag so this bean tag here is a replacement for this beans tag inside XML right but I don't want to do this thing also right so let, let me remove this stuff and still it, still it should work and if you run this without those stuff we are getting the error right so it's saying uh, no qualifying bean type so how to achieve that so to, to make this as a bean by default you just have to write a uh, annotation colors con component so every class of which you need an object example for Samsung we want the object of Samsung right just make it component in fact we record object of Snapdragon just write add component so the advantage of writing add component is by default you'll be getting the object of Snapdragon and Samsung okay you don't have to get any any beans for that but since we are saying that we want to go for uh, automatic configuration which means we, we don't have to specify anything for that we need to use an extra annotation here with configuration and we have to say all the components are predefined so just type component scan it will scan all the components for you and in this you have to mention the base package in which package you have all these things so we have in package which is com dot uh, telesco telesco dot spring demos or uh, spring anno so that's the package in which you have all the required classes right so you can see we have all the classes we have samsung we have app config inside or uh, we have samsung we have snapdragon inside only one package so if you have multiple package you can specify multiple package using comma okay sounds good uh, i think it should work now if i run this code everything sounds everything looks good if i run this code boom can you see that we got the output so we don't have to specify any bean tag you just have to say add component scan it will scan all the components in your project or in this specific package okay so it's, it's that simple now what it is doing is it is going for by type okay uh, by default every example see in this uh, if you go for XML type every class will have a name right so that's an ID what about this thing since we're writing component what what will be its name so by default the name will be so you have to give the by default the name will be Samsung okay so it will remove it will make this small as uh, it will capital it will make that capital as small as so this is default name for that so even if you don't mention the name it will be Samsung if you want to change it you can change it you can say this is let's say my Samsung okay you can do that also but by default if you don't mention it will be Samsung so if you write this component annotation the default ID will be given as 
the name which is non qualified which is non qualified and uh, what uh, non qualified and de capitalized uh, just just just, just uh, ignore the spelling there so it is non qualified and de capitalized okay which simply means uh, you don't have, you don't have to mention the package name so your I, your name will not be have a package name and it will be with it will start with a small character okay uh, so it is going for by type right so when you specify a component scan it which is searching by type now let's say uh, so we see in this samsung we want object of mobile processor right so we are getting object of snapdragon what if if i create a new class and we'll name this class as mediatek okay that's the model name or that's the company name and this mediatek also implements mobile processor in this i will print uh, second best this is not the second best cpu but still uh, let's write it second best now the problem is uh, we need to mention this is also a component right we have to specify this even this is component so can you uh, okay what's that now so just add component yeah. so now uh, can, you, can you see we have two classes snapdragon and mediatek both implements mobile processor and samsung needs mobile processor we have not mentioned we have we want nowhere we have, we have mentioned we want snapdragon right now this time how to specify that we want snapdragon we want mediatek so if i run this code now uh, there will be an error because of the confusion because the confusion is so you can see there's an error which is no unique bin definition exception which means uh, for the same interface we have two classes which is mediatek and snapdragon can you see the names here small m and small s because of the uh, names there so how to make sure that we want uh, let's say if, if there's a confusion i want mediatek only i don't want uh, I don't want what I don't want uh, Snapdragon so we can specify something called as primary so if you specify primary uh, okay so it will if, if there's a confusion it will take this one in, into consideration the media tag and if I done this so since we don't have any confusion we got the output which is second best and second best is media tag right and if I copy this if I cut this primary and if I paste this into Snapdragon now uh, and if I run this code, we should be getting world best CPU. Uh, we are getting that. Oh, we are getting exception. Where I have pasted it. Oh, it's not not pasted. Yeah. Okay, let me run this. Oh, so can you see that we got world best CPU? So that's how we use a, a primary annotation. Okay, we have one more thing, but let's say let's say I don't want to mention primary annotation here okay and in in this samsung itself while writing uh, auto wired i want to mention the name i want snapdragon or i want mediatek so you can do that with the help of qualifier so if you don't if you're not going for primary which means you want to specify which you want so you can in qualify you can mention i want media tech i don't want snapdragon i want mediatek so even that will do and if i run this code we got the output because second best why second base? Because we are mentioning qualifiers MediaTek. We can also specify it as Snapdragon. Now it will fetch Snapdragon. Right? So you can see how many annotations we are using here. So this is Spring. So this is this topic is called as uh, Spring Code Annotations. Okay, so if I if I go to any 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 of these annotations here, if I click on component. So you can see it was introduced in 2.5. So if you are, if you have worked on Spring, which is before 2.5, we have to use all we have to use all this stuff, which is uh, XML based configuration. Now since we are using a Spring, which is we are, which is I guess four, so it will this annotation works there. Okay. So we have so just remember how many annotations we are working with. We are working with add component, which is for the object, or we can specify the class object. We can write auto wire so, so that it will search for the uh, object itself. We can specify the qualifier to match the name. Uh, we can specify what? We can specify add configuration, which means it will 
it, it is a configuration file for you. Add component scan, which means it will scan all the components for you. Then we have, yeah, that's it. These are the configuration, we, we, these are the annotations we have worked on this in this project. So that's your Spring annotation. Uh, if you have any questions, any doubts, you can just post, post it in the comment section. In fact, you can give me also some feedback. Uh, your, uh, if you like this video or so, something like that. Yeah, that's it from this video. Do like the video and do subscribe for further videos. Thank you so much for watching.